SpaceX's next generation rocket is called the Starship. Elon Musk, the CEO of the firm, intends to use it to fuel his desire to colonize Mars. It is specifically designed to lower the expense of space travel, making the numerous journeys required to prepare the red planet for human habitation feasible. So when will this spacecraft leave Earth and what are the preparations in place? Welcome to our channel guys. In today's video, we'll discuss SpaceX launching Starship into orbit in July 2022. Before that, do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. SpaceX's Falcon series rockets were the first reusable rockets, however they were only partially reusable. Today the space exploration firm has gained sufficient knowledge to attempt to design and run a fully reusable rocket. There are two stages to the Starship, the upper and lower, which will break free from the gravitational pull of the Earth and separate. The lower stage, sometimes known as the Super Heavy, will quickly return to the ground, though occasionally it won't actually touch ground because of powerful arms. Attached to the launch tower that may catch the booster in mid-air and place it on the launch mound. As SpaceX aims for at least 1,000 launches annually, the booster will be prepped for the following trip in less than an hour. While this is happening, the upper stage, also known as the Starship, or simply the ship, will continue to its destination. In addition to Mars missions, the ship can carry astronauts to the moon, deliver heavy cargo to space stations, launch satellites for SpaceX and others, including various militaries around the world. While it is a spacecraft, the Starship will also service on the Earth. SpaceX envisions using it to provide rapid, commercial transport that drastically reduces the time it takes to travel between cities. There is a special use for the Starship in connection with Musk's plan to colonize Mars. The US Army has started evaluating how it used to transport huge cargo and personnel quickly through one point to another. The spacecraft will act as the Mars volunteers' first shelter as they get acclimated to the hostile planet. The Raptor engines, which SpaceX has significantly improved and enhanced alongside the rocket will enable the Starship, the most powerful rocket, to carry out the several tasks outlined. The Starship is capable of orbiting payloads weighing up to 150 metric tons. 100 metric tons was the carrying capacity initially, but numerous upgrades have now improved its performance. The ship is 50 meters tall, 9 meters in diameter, and has a fuel capacity of 1200 tons. Its thrust is 3.2 mega pound feet. The Super Heavy is even more powerful and massive, measuring nearly 70 meters in height and 9 meters in diameter, thanks to its six Raptor engines. After a long wait, Musk announced that the Starship will finally start all of its engines in the maiden journey to orbit in July. He said this on his preferred social media platform, Twitter. SpaceX will have a second Starship stack, ready to fly in August. The ship successfully completed the first cryogenic proof test after SpaceX accomplished the first pneumatic proof test on the second attempt. The crew of SpaceX significantly modified Pad A to support Ship 24's upgraded design and to test it by using enormous hydraulic rams. This will be used to simulate the thrust of Raptor engines about 12 hours after having completed the first cryo-proof test. Two months later, SpaceX was prepared to install a Ship 24 on one of the company's suborbital Starship test and launch pads. SpaceX completed two additional qualification runs, both of which were successful. The first one included Ship 24 venting from its nose vents, suggesting that the smaller pair of landing propellants as well as the main tanks may have been filled and pressurized. Additionally, SpaceX probably tested the new Ship 24 by replicating the operation of six Raptor engines using the hydraulic ramps on the mount. Six of the new Raptor engines will be aboard Ship 24. These updated engines have a 25% increase in thrust over the earlier models. The ship will have three smaller sea-level optimized Raptors and three more vacuum-optimized variations, allowing it to deliver up to 14,000 tons of thrust at full throttle, or around twice as much as the Falcon 9's booster could. After that, SpaceX returns Ship 24 to the high bay where its rocket engines were installed. As they secure the final enhancements to their orbital Starship rockets, SpaceX has started to push for the finish line. Elon Musk's aerospace company gained momentum after receiving the FAA's environmental green light on June 13 and started making final preparations at Starbase Texas to test and launch the single biggest and most powerful flying machine ever made over the weekend of June 24. In order to install the six Raptor vacuum engines, the orbital candidate ship 24 was hoisted onto a crane in the high bay construction structure. Compared to the initial Starship design, which had three Raptor vac engines, this is a substantial improvement. You may think of these vacuum engines as essentially a space-optimized version of the same engine that pulls the rocket off the ground when the ship clears the atmosphere and separates from its extremely heavy booster. They are characterized by their noticeably wider nozzle. The spacecraft and its more than 100 tons of cargo will be propelled by these six vacuum engines into the desired orbit or even to the moon or the planet Mars. It is unknown at this time whether this represents the first time a full Starship and rocket prototype have been prepared for an orbital launch. 
Considering that both test candidates are prepared, there is no telling when a live fire attempt might occur, but we shouldn't have to wait long for the big event. We know that SpaceX will use the Starship's incredible power to launch their second generation of larger and more capable Starlink satellites. We also know that they have a new strategy for how the Starship will deliver those new Starlinks into orbit because Ship 24 was also spotted getting equipped with the first ever Starlink loader device. Currently, a Falcon 9 second stage will simply release the complete cluster of 60 satellites when deploying a batch of Starlinks. Centrifugal force will cause the satellites to scatter as they drift away with the Starship when the ship releases its grip on them. A new mechanical deployer created by SpaceX will literally spit out each satellite one at a time through a gap in the ship's side. It resembles a massive dispenser in outer space. The mechanical Starlink loader was raised to the S-24 payload compartment before being lowered once more. After some time, there's a good chance that engineers will test loading methods using an actual Starlink V2 dummy. This version of the Starship has a specialized cargo bay, but it's not the only alteration that has been made. This is especially true when compared to an older launch candidate like the S-20. The internal systems on S-24 are organized differently, which is the fundamental distinction. The addition of the Starlink dispenser unavoidably required some internal reconfiguration, but we must also consider the fact that S-24 has more engines, necessitating revisions to the structural and plumbing requirements. Instead of the four rows of stamped and welded panels that were previously used to make the nose cone, two rows of stretched form panels have been used to reduce weight. The Starship's hull's rings were moved around. Some parts gain rings while others lose them. A new aft cone, for example, required a portion to be shrunk by one ring in order to make room for the new Raptor V2 engines. In order to accommodate the piping of the new liquid oxygen tank vents or ullage thrust events, the methane header tank was also moved from the common dome area of the ship's center to the nose cone section. The biggest modification is undoubtedly the liquid oxygen venting devices that SpaceX replaced the conventional reaction control systems with in order to perform the same role they already had to vent the gas for weight savings. Speaking of boosters, it is a solution that has already been incorporated in Booster 7 and after. The Can Crusher apparatus has been used to test the Booster 7 test tank and the results seem promising. As we move closer to the S24 and Booster 7 engine burn tests, it's exciting to see all this work being done at once. Testing may also reveal some brand new issues that we haven't encountered previously. All of SpaceX's Raptor V2s have never been tested on finished prototypes, but maybe all the work done to reinforce and rebalance the Starship and its boosters will pay off and will receive a seamless performance in the coming weeks. Do you think Starship will be our means to Mars? Let us know in the comments. Do not forget to give us a like, share, and do subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching.